distributions, binomial distributions are still probability distributions, <coughs> meaning it's still a yet, I mean, it's, it's still a, has the percentages that add up to one, no negative. The difference here is there are only two outcomes. So when you're setting up your, when you're trying to find your probability, there's only two things that can happen. And we call those successes okay. or fails. Okay. In other words, you flip a coin, what's the probability you land on heads? That's binomial. There are only two outcomes. You either land on heads or you don't land on heads. Okay. And it's a 50% chance, correct. Um, what's the probability that you correctly guess um, the right answer on a four-question multiple choice test for one question? That's binomial because you either do or don't. So it's, yeah, it's a 25% chance, but it's bi. You understand what I'm saying by binomial? So we use these variables. We use P to represent the probability. Wait. So there has to be a success and there has to be a failure. If it's not, it's not binomial. We're just talking about binomial. Okay. So if P is the probability of success, okay, so if it's 25% chance of succeeding, then we use the variable Q, Q, Q to represent the probability of failure or of non-success. What would that be? If you have the probability of success, how would you find the probability of non-success? Subtract it from 100. It's got to add to 100, right? 100% 100 or a 1. So this is 1 minus Q. I mean, P, I'm sorry. Ah! I'm looking at the Q and wrote. Okay. Oh no, I'm, I apologize. So if P is like 50, so 1 minus 50? Right, so 1 minus 50% would leave you what percentage? Where's that music coming from? I heard that too. Right. So the percentage of success and the percentage of failure is the same. Yeah. Right. But like Let's, if you if there's one chance of getting something and then two chances of getting another. What? Shh, guys, guys, guys. Would that still work? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying either. Okay, let's think about it like this. It's a multiple choice test. Here's question number one. Yada, 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 yada. You can pick A, B, C, or D. So my question to you, first of all, I asked you, was it binomial? And it's binomial because you, if you're guessing, just randomly picking one of the variables, that is binomial. Because you either pick the right one or you don't. So my P, which is the probability of success, would be what? 25% because I have a 25% chance if there's four options there's only one right answer one out of four is 25% so you have to put it in that and <laughs> right well if it was in the reason I said one minus is 25% the same thing as 0.25 mm -hmm. so if I want to find Q then I can do one minus 0.25 and find out that the probability of non-success 0.75 which is 75 percent. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. P is the probability of success, Q is the probability of no success. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So we use this because what if I up the ante a little bit and I said that your test had five questions. What's the probability? How many would you have to get right out of five questions to pass? Three. Three? You gotta get three right. So my question is, what's the probability? We got four choice MC test. Ah. Five questions. I don't know why my computer keeps doing that today. It's new. That's something new. I don't know. Four 
choice, multiple choice test. Five questions. What's the probability that you get? So they're 20 points a piece, 20, 40. So you can't miss more than two. So that you get three or more right. That means, what's the probability that you get three right? What's the probability that you get, or the probability that you get four right, or five right? This is quickly going to become kind of, uh, right? Or means add. Or means add. What's the probability that I get? It, it's, it, it's getting nasty, right? Okay, so we have a formula that we can use. And it works whenever it's binomial. Okay, y'all ready for the formula? It's going to make our life so much easier. Oh, there's that NCR again. Yeah, I'm sorry. Apparently, this has been paused for quite some time, so let me go back and recap. This is our formula for... Binomial distributions, if you need to pause it and copy down what each one does, which each variable is. <laughs> I'm not real sure when the video paused. All right, but now we're setting up to use this formula. So five questions. Each question has four choices. What's the probability that you get three right? Five, choose three. I want to know about three questions. What's my P? I have no clue. It's the probability of success on one question. Uh, what, that's what 25. Point two five. What would Q be then? Maybe it'll help you to come over here and define the variables first. N is the number of questions, which is five. And R is how many you want to get right, which is three. You would want to get all of them right. Well, you would, but for the probability of this particular one. All right. So times 0.25 to the 3 times 0.75 squared. Put it in your calculator. In minus R. Be careful as you do it. Oh my goodness. Sorry about the remember this on Yes. And we're going to take the 5 first before we put the SCR joint? Yep, 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 yep. 3. Oh, it's a 10. 10. If you have your Pascal's triangle, you can do 5, choose 3 pretty easily. Would you say? No. It's just different. Zero eight seven. So, point zero eight eight. Point zero eight eight. What did you say you got, Sam? I said point zero eight seven eight. Yeah. Okay. So approximately point zero eight eight. So you have an eight point eight percent chance of randomly guessing and getting three questions right. I'm at nine. What if I said I want to get at least three right? You would have to count three. I want to get three, four, five, or five. So I add the four and five. So figure that out real quick because what I'm essentially doing is I'm figuring out the probability of passing this test based solely on guessing. did not record again. I'm sorry. We did the probability of three, four, or five and added them together to get the probability of three or more right. Oh. So we would do 8.8%. This is, a, make sure you don't mess up here. 0 0.088, this is a decimal. So if you add them all together as a decimal, you'd add that. But if you convert it to the percentage, 
You can just add them as they are exactly the same. That's right. Let me read you an example out of the book that I think will, will help it clear it up just a little bit. All right, listen carefully. Because here's what I want us to do. I want us to construct an entire um, distribution, and I want us to make a histogram of the distribution. Okay? And these distributions are just a little bit different. According to a survey... We're going to assume that it's a random survey. It was done all correct. 41% of U.S. households have a soccer ball. <clears throat> Suppose you randomly choose six people. We need to make a distribution of if the people have a soccer ball or not. Okay, so in other words, um, let's think about, they could be, there could be none of the people that we ask have a soccer ball. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Does that make sense? Okay, so what, I, my question to you is what's the probability that you ask six people? If, if overall 41% do have a soccer ball, what's the probability that you randomly pick six people and none of them have a soccer ball? Is it binomial, first of all? Yes. You either have a soccer ball or you don't have a soccer ball. Okay. So what would my, the only thing that's going to start changing is my R and that's it. Okay. So what is my n? Six. Because that's what you originally have, right? This is my r. This, that's correct, Julian. Zero is the r? This row is my r. My r is what's changing. I'm changing my number of successes. Okay. What is my p? What's the probability of success? 41. 41%. Which would mean q is... So you would just do 100. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now I'm setting up seven different scenarios. If they're binomial, then I can use my formula. So I've got six choose zero times 0 0.41 to the zero times 0.59 to the six. Point zero four two. How about one? Six choose one times am I recording? Point four one to the first times point five nine to the what what goes here? Five. Because there's always gonna be six people. Point one seven one seven five. Yeah, let's go three decimals. What about two? Um, six two two point four one to the second on point five nine to the four. Six two three. Point four one to the third. I'm just gonna say and so on and so forth. Give me the numbers. What goes here? Point three zero five. Make sure you can all put this in your calculator and get these values, even though I'm giving them to you at this point. Now, we are going to graph these in a histogram now. So we would have to see which one gives the best opportunity. Um, Correct. So... What's the most likely amount of people that have a soccer ball? Two. Two. Two, right. Mo more than likely, if I knock on six random doors, I'm going to find two people that have a soccer ball. Because if you move the 
Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. My highest is 0 0.305. So when I set up my histogram, I'm probably going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. 1, 2, 3. Ah. What did I forget? Zero. Zero. Gosh, I mean, you are rough on me. That's how you do me. 1.75? No, I do not. Because I missed zero again. 0 0.042. Two is 0.305. You all see what we're doing? Four, five, six. So yesterday we graphed a probability distribution and y'all said it looks symmetrical, right? When we describe the shape of a distribution, that's one of them. Symmetrical looks like this. That would be a symmetrical distribution. This one is not, okay? This one, do you see that it kind of tails off in this direction? In problem stats, we call that skewed, and we call it skewed to the right. And the reason it's skewed to the right is because it tails off to the right. See how it kind of tails to the right? No. Smaller. If it did this, this one skewed left. Because it's kind of like a stand. Whichever way it tails off to, like which one? Like gets smaller. smaller. But not just if it just has one. That's not like. This is lower right here, but it's not skewed left. It's skewed right because my the they six. start gradually decreasing on the right more. It's not lower than six, though. That doesn't really matter. Wait, it just it matters as it declines. If it was 50%, would it be like symmetrical? Uh, yes. Um, because you would have 25. It could also not have a shape. I mean, some of them just do not have shapes. and I mean, it, you may graph a distribution, and it looks like this. And I would say that that's none. That's not symmetrical or skewed. Random. Just oh, random. Um, let's see. Looking back at our chart here, tell me, what is the probability that you encounter at least four homes that have soccer balls? 14.8. Um, at least four. Oh, so then you would have to do 100. Four. You add all of them. Yes. Yeah. Or five. Or six. Or six. So you would add those all together. So at least. Have four. One nine. Does that make sense, everybody? Seven. 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 Seven